Welcome to Master Math. Today we're going to be talking about statistics and finding measures of central tendency. Finding measures of central tendency. What's that mean? Well, I think you know. I think you know what that means. If I had found a measure of central tendency, I, may, I probably found what was normal or what was expected. I found what was a common value. I found an average value, a typical value. I found a value that the other values were clustered around. If I said Joe was of average height for a 15-year-old boy, you'd know what I meant. You'd know that the other heights of all the boys cluster around the height of, of, of Joe. He's kind of in the middle. He's typical. And in statistics, you've already learned several measures of central tendency. You know what mean means. You know what median means. You know what the mode means. And all of these are measures of central tendency or measures of the average. Well, let's see how this might be helpful. Let's say you were planning a trip to an area. Uh, for some time towards the end of December. And you wanted to know what the average high temperature might be. I mean, you got to figure out what kind of clothing to pack, and it it's, it's, would be nice to know what kind of weather to expect. So you wanted to find out a normal or a common or an expected high temperature in Renaria. Ren Renaria? Oh, yeah, Renaria. This is a fantasy land that's uh, divided up into two portions. There's North Rhin area, which is that pink area on the top, and then there's South Rhin area, which is the island in the uh, sea below the mainland there. And, and it's really, you're going to probably visit both places, but most of the Rhin area is up in North Rhin area. And you want to know what the average temperature is. So you get some statistics. You find out what the high temperature on December 25th was in the year 4213. Yeah, 42, it's a fantasy land, and uh, this is a fantasy world. And in the year 4213, you found the high temperatures for all the major cities in uh, Renaria. And you can see I put them in a chart here, and I put them in order. I put the lowest temperature on the top and the highest temperature on the bottom. So they're in order from lowest to greatest. And that's going to help us understand the uh, typical or common or average temperature for Well, I've got these temperatures, and I can just look at them, and I can see that most of them are clustering in the 30s. So I, that's that. But I may need more detail than that. I could probably analyze these using some statistical tools and, and understand it better. For instance, I could create a bar graph, and on each of these on each of these bars for each city, I've I've shown the average high temperature on December 25th. Well, wait, they all seem to be at a very similar value, except for one. Kelnan is much much higher. It's an outlier. Outliers. That that's going to create a problem. That's going to mess up my statistics. I think. Well, let's, let's explore it further and see what we find out. I can create a line graph. And, oh boy, that outlier is still there. It's still making this line graph unpredictable. And I can create a stem and leaf chart. And, oh, again, again, it's just that outlier is messing stuff up. I've got one in the 60s, 68. But in the 30s, I've got six. 60, 36, 32, 30, 32, 35, and 36. That outlier is messing stuff up. Well, we could also look at this data set and use some of the statistics that we already know to try to see if that helps us understand what's normal, what's typical, what the central tendency is. So let's try mean first. You all remember how to calculate the mean. To calculate the mean, I get a sum of all the data points. I sum them up, I add them all up, and then I divide by the number of data points. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I take the sum of all those numbers and divide it by seven, and I come up with 38.3 degrees. 
Now, is that a good measure of central tendency? Well, I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure it is because if these are all in order here, and if I put that 38.3 into this list in order, it would be way down here. Like six of the temperatures would be higher than our mean. Our mean would be closer to an extreme temperature. Well, let's try another measure of central tendency. Let's look at the median. You remember the median. The median's the value that's right in the middle. Now, I've got an odd number of values here. I've got seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the one in the middle would be the one that had three above it and three below it. And that's 34 degrees. It's right in the middle. And that seems like a better measure of central tendency because I've got cities above it and below it, and it's kind of right in the middle. It seems like maybe a little more average. Well, let's try mode. You remember mode. Mode is the most frequent entry point. Now, I got 232 degrees, and I got 236 degrees. So I've got two modes, 32 and 36 degrees. But I'm not happy with this data. I've got a median of 34, a mode that's that's 32 and 36, but my mean is way up here at 38.3. There's four and a half degrees difference between my median and my mode. That's a that's a big difference. I think I know what the problem is. The problem is that my outlier in Kelman is messing up my average or my mean. So I'm going to eliminate Kelman and I'm going to do this again. I'm just going to eliminate that outlier and find out what my mean is. And my mean without my outlier is 33.3 degrees. That's five degrees less than my mean with my outlier. Five degrees, I, that might mean the difference between a heavy sweater and a light sweater. So my me outlier messed up my mean. What did it do to my median? Well, it changed my median, too. When I took that out, I only had six values. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my median, I take out the low two and the high two, and I got two in the middle, and I find the middle point between those two, and it's halfway between 32 and 34, or a median of 33 degrees. Well, that seems a lot better, too. I mean, it um, seems like we're getting a little bit closer to the, to the middle, to an average value for the temperatures on December 25th. How about our mode? Well, our mode doesn't change. We've still got 32 and 36 degrees. But I think we learned something. I think we learned that if you have an outlier in a data set, it's going to make, an, it's going to have an impact on your measures of central tendency. And it's probably going to impact the mean more than it is the median. You try this one. Hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, we're supposed to find the mean, the median, the mode, and the range for this data set. And the first thing I want to do is put this data set in order from smallest to largest, because that'll help me understand it. And I mean, I can just look at this ordered listing of the data, and I can see that the average, the normal, the middle is going to be somewhere around there. So that's helpful. But now I can apply some statistics to this, and I can calculate the mean. And you remember the mean, it's the total of all the data entries divided by the number of data entries. In this case, it's 2346 divided by 9, or 260.7. Now I can calculate the median. But I need them in order in order to calculate the median. There's nine values, so the middle is going to be the fifth value, where I've got four above it and four below it. And that fifth value, that one right in the middle, is 264. Now I'm going to calculate the mode. The mode is the most frequent value. And there is no most frequent value. There's only one of each of the data points. So I have nothing duplicated. I have no mode. Now let's look at the range. In this case, the range 
is 148, which is the difference between the biggest value and the smallest value. Now, what's that mean? Well, that tells you how dispersed your data is. Is it really tightly packed around the middle, or is it spread out over a lot of different varieties? And in this case, it's fairly spread out. If that range, for instance, were only 20, that means that all the values were pretty close to the median or the mode. They were pretty close to the middle, and you, and you can expect things to pretty consistently be near that median. But if you've got a broad range, you know that there's going to be some occasions where the values vary a whole bunch from this measure of central tendency. Well, Maddie's a pretty good bowler. Right now, she's had these scores in five trips to the bowling alley. and She's got one more trip, and she needs to average 180 after all six trips to the bowling alley in order to win a trophy. Well, how are we going to figure out what she needs on that last trip to the bowling alley in order to win the trophy? I think what we ought to do is start by getting the current average. And to do that, I need the sum of these five entries, which sums to 904, and then I need to divide that by 5. And when I do that, I get 180.8. 904 divided by 5 is 180.8. Now that's after five trips. What I want to know is what her score would be after six trips to the bowling alley. What her average or mean was after six trips. Well, I know enough about algebra to know that if I had this equation, I could take that five and multiply both sides by it, and it would leave just 904 on the left, and on the right I'd have 180.8 times five. But I don't want to know how much her average is after five times. I want to know her mean after six times. So what I could do is write 180, which is the average I need, times six. And that would be the grand total I needed after six trips in order to average 180. Now how could I put that back into this problem? Well, I could say that that... 6 times 180 equals her current total, 904, plus whatever she gets tonight, which we'll call x. Now, I've got an algebra problem, and I could solve this. I can simplify it to say that I've got 940 plus x equals 6 times 180, or 1,080. And then, I could subtract 904 from both sides of the equation to isolate my x, and I'd have x equals 176. So Maddie only has to bowl 176 tonight, or better, and she'll win a trophy. We've got a data set here which lists the absolute hardness of a variety of minerals. And we're supposed to calculate the mean, the median, and the mode. And then we're supposed to determine which measure is most affected by an outlier. Okay, well the first thing you always want to do is put the values in order from greatest to least or least to greatest, which I've done down here. And I can see that there is an outlier. That's 1600. The hardness of diamonds is way out of line with the other measures. So let's calculate our mean and our median and our mode. Our mean is the total of all these values divided by 7 because there's 7 entry points or data points. And that totals 311.6. Now let's calculate our median. Our median is the value that's right in the middle. There's seven data points. So that means I've got three below the middle and three above the middle. Three plus three is six, and the one in the middle is the seventh value. So our median is 48. Now let's look for a mode. Well, none of these values repeat itself, so there is no mode. So We've got a mean of 311.6, and 
and a median of 48. That's huge. That's a great big difference. Why do we have a great big difference? Well, we clearly have a great big difference because of this outlier. Diamonds are a whole bunch harder than any other mineral. So, which value of central tendency was most affected by the outlier? The mean. That's our lesson on finding measures of central tendency. I hope you understand this concept a little bit better now. Let's test that understanding. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on finding measures of central tendency. After you've done that worksheet, go back to Master Math and try the quiz on finding measures of central tendency. And be sure to come back and visit us again real soon.